All right, so I wanna share my story of tech burnout today, okay? If you're in a position where you're thinking like, oh my God, I, I, I've been in this field too long or I can't do this, I just need to take a break, I need to quit my job right now. If you're in that position, hold off, watch this video real quick. The reason I say that is because I did that, okay? I did quit my job. I took a year and a half off of working in tech because I was so burned out, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was very fortunate. I had saved up some money, so I was able to afford living without having to have a job, and I got to experience life without one, like a little bit of an early retirement, just for a year and a half. Um, just, it was, it was awesome. I Listen, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It was, it was like the best time of my life. It was awesome, and I think about it all the time. It was so much fun. Oh man, if I could retire tomorrow, I would do it. Um, I wouldn't really stop working. I would keep doing this. I love making content. I'm meandering. Let's get back on topic. So. It was at the end of 2020. Now, if you remember 2020, kind of a crazy year, okay? March was a little bit wild and things were a little bit uncertain. But towards the end of 2020, things were becoming a little more certain. Yeah, things were closed down still, but things were getting a little bit more certain. And I remember at that point, I had just had enough of the job I was in. I was there for about five years. I've been working for over like 10 years in the industry. And it was just one of those things where I was like, I, I'm done with this. It's not the same job that I remember. I'm not working on stuff that I like. Um, people that I worked with are just no longer there. The company was just changing from underneath me. Um, yeah, because people, old people were leaving and new people were coming, but also there was like a buyout. It was a whole big thing, new management, all sorts of stuff. Every bad thing you could think of happened there. Um, so I, I was just so burned out. I wasn't enjoying working on code anymore, which was upsetting it was almost existential because i was like i enjoy this stuff i like doing this stuff like before i went to university for it i was doing this stuff on my own i was hacking the original xbox um yeah the original xbox putting a mod chip in it and running linux on it like i thought this was like the coolest stuff ever and then i go learn this stuff in university and it's like this is the coolest stuff ever this is awesome i want to work on this stuff and then getting a job in the field and being like, this is awesome. I love this. This is great. And doing that for like 10 years. And then it just kept getting worse and worse. And then finally I was like, I, I can't do this. I don't know what would happen if I stuck it out. But I was like, some part of me is like dying. Like mentally, I can just not, I, I can't handle this. I hate this. Like I'm, I'm dreading going to work. I'm dreading meetings. I'm dreading having to even write any of the code. And it's not even like I wasn't problem solving, which is what I enjoy a lot with programming, problem solving and creativity. It was just sort of like I didn't care about the problems I was solving. And then I was getting no one was showing any appreciation for them. It was just like, oh, solve this problem. And if I didn't, well, don't worry, the project would get scrapped in a couple of months anyway. So it didn't really matter. And just that underlying subconscious feeling of none of this work actually matters. That war on me, that war on me more than I realized. It took me years to realize how much that wore on me. I need to actually care about some of the work that I'm doing. Um, if you watch me make content on this channel, you can see that I am very passionate about it. I love this, um, but I'll get to that. I, I won't spoil that yet because I didn't start making content until after my bout of unemployment. So yeah, end of 2022, I, or sorry, end of 2020, I quit my job and I took a year and a half off. I wouldn't start the next job until the beginning of 2022. Um, and I, I wouldn't start making content until the end of 2022, just so you can have like a rough timeline there. But man, when I took that time off, it was amazing because I, I kind of had a little bit of a plan for it. And my plan was don't force myself to do anything computer related at all, at all. So I have other hobbies that I'm interested in. I do like woodworking and stuff. Um, I don't talk about it much in this channel. I should, it's really fun. Um, but I had kind of exhausted woodworking. I wasn't sick of it, I wasn't burned out. There was just not really much I wanted to make. I can only build so many tables and <laughs> desks and stuff. This desk I actually built myself, so um, pointing to it like you can see it. But my other hobby is music. So I really went hard when I was unemployed on my YouTube channel for music. That is not this YouTube channel. That is a different YouTube channel. I can link to it if people want to see it. Um, nowhere near as big as this channel. I don't treat it as seriously as this channel, so don't worry about it. But I uploaded music there. I made remixes of songs. I did like original piano pieces and stuff like that. That's where I learned about content creation and how hard it is to actually like grow a YouTube channel. But it was amazing. I was being so creative. I had been burned out of tech, like industry burned me out, but art pulled me back in. So in the 
like being able to create music again just got the creative juices flowing i didn't think about programming at all i didn't care about programming at all i was just focused on music and something really interesting happened it was about six to nine months in that so like six to nine months being unemployed i got the urge to code again which was weird so i didn't force it but i didn't fight it i just said okay if the urge is here, then I'll indulge it. I won't work any harder on it than I need to, and I won't stop myself if I want to really go at it. Like, I'm going to just let it flow. If I need to stay up till 5 in the morning programming something, hey, that's awesome. If I'm going to work for 30 minutes and I'm done, hey, that's awesome. I don't have a boss. I'm not reporting to someone. I'm not making money for this. I'm going to do it completely for the love of the game. So, yeah, I don't remember the exact day I started working on it, but I wrote this program in C called SSHP. I've talked about it previously on this channel. I can link to it below, but it's basically just like a parallel SSH executor. It was a program I wanted on my um, systems, something that I've wanted for a while. And I had a version of it that worked in Node.js, but I wanted something more portable, something that I could just simply compile and have everywhere. And so I decided to just do it in C. There was a lot of stuff I needed to learn to make that work. Like I know how to program in C, but I needed to learn how to asynchronously respond to events on file descriptors. So very specific stuff, stuff that I had wanted to invest time learning into, but it didn't line up with any of the stuff that I was working on in my job. So there's no job, so I can take all the time I want. So I was just reading through documentation, working on this. It probably took about two weeks to write, um, but it was awesome. It's probably some of the best C code I've written. Uh, it works really well. I was able to like test it. I still use this program to this day. I find it super useful. It's awesome. And it was just cool. It was cool to be able to write a program that actually has like a man page, a readme, documentation, uh, comments in the source code. Like I went all out and made it as good as it could be. And it was cool. I was able to start a project from like beginning to end and wrap it up in a bow, something I was not able to do at my previous job towards the end of it because things had just gotten so bad. And I realized like I enjoy that. Like I, it was one of those things where like my love of computers kind of started coming back. Um, I didn't push it like 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 a scared cat once the cat like you know showed me a little bit of affection i didn't just pounce on it i was like okay i can wait for it to come to me that's how i felt about this like i was like you know what that was a fun time writing that program and now i'm not gonna push it i'm not gonna go instantly try to get a job in the field but i'm just gonna like ease off and we'll see what happens so there was just no pressure and that was great because i went back to creating music and it was a lot of fun and that was great and then it was, whew, man, probably about two or three months before I started working in 2022, before I would apply to a job, actually. Um, I decided that my buddy had been writing a lot of Rust, uh, and he told me that Rust was a really cool language. He was really enjoying it. And I had tried to learn it a couple years previously, and it was just too confusing. I, I didn't understand the borrow checker. I didn't understand the concept of ownership. It was so unlike any language I had done before. So it was just weird. I'd kind of given up on it. You know, I was working that job I didn't like. So then I was like, okay, I have a fresh set of eyes. Let's try to do this. And one of my favorite ways to learn a language is to port existing code I have to this language. And that's worked really well. I would recommend that for Rust. I'll get into that. But I ported a program I wrote called VSV. This program's still there. If you're on Void Linux, you can install VSV, uh, Void Service Manager. I ported it from Bash to Rust, so it'd go a lot faster. And that was that was an experience. That was like there were times where I was programming and I was getting frustrated. I was like, I was like, I would have these thoughts where I'm like, am I washed up? Like, can I can I not do this? Am I is it just a skill issue? Like, am I just not good enough to be able to do this? And then I would remind myself, I'm like, that's a that's a crazy thought to have because like internally I have this belief that anyone can do anything. Like I do. This is how I operate in my life. I operate under the assumption that anyone can do anything and like I can do anything. Not in a hubris sort of way, a little bit of hubris, but I believe like I, I can do anything if I really take the time to learn it and set my mind on it. Um, learning Rust is just a mental battle for me, so I just have to really spend time and understand what I'm doing. Um, and that's what I did. I just pushed through. And it was weird because I was worried. I was like, you know, I'm getting frustrated with programming. Am I just going to burn myself out again? But then I realized, no, I'm, I'm really loving this. Actually making myself be disciplined and get frustrated and have these thoughts of, is this a skill issue? No, I can, I, this is not insurmountable. I can go over, I can learn this, I can do this. 
it did the opposite of burnout. It like it, it, it amped me up. It made me like motivated. It it helped me stay disciplined. It got me excited to work on this stuff. Like it, which makes it makes so much sense in hindsight. But during it, I was like, oh my god, is this gonna burn me out? In hindsight, I'm like, no, this is this is a challenge. I rose to the challenge. That's incredible. I didn't have that thing the old job had. I didn't have red tape. I didn't have bureaucracy. I didn't have unappreciated work. I didn't have work that didn't matter. No, it was me working on my own mental understanding, my own skill. And that's a valuable thing. That's a valuable thing to me. And that just, it got me amped up. I was excited. It was fun. And that's kind of how I got through my burnout there was, yeah, to basically just sum it all up. My way of dealing with burnout was to acknowledge it and respect it. Um, obviously, like I said, I saved up some money. I was fortunate enough to take that time off. If you're thinking that and you want to know kind of like what it was like, this is my experience with it. Um, I didn't force it. I just said, hey, it'll come back to me when it comes back to me, or it won't. That's okay. And it came back. It came back. It came back slowly in waves. And then finally, when I decided to kind of work at it, I was going to say push through it. I didn't push through it. That's not the right way of saying it. But when I decided to work at it and put some mental effort into like learning Rust in this example, Oh my God, it was so rewarding. Now Rust is seriously one of my favorite languages. Like I love it. It's, it's up there. Like C, Bash, and Rust, I think are all at the top. Um, yeah, I just, I, I it, it took work and it was very difficult, but now that I have it, it, it was like learning Vim now. I'm like, this is so useful. This is incredible. I, I love the ownership concept. Um, I still fight with the, I don't even fight with the borrow checker that much anymore. I have a pretty good understanding of the borrow checker. Um, the only time I'm trying to fight is if I'm trying to code pretty fast and I end up having to throw a bunch of clones everywhere. It's yeah, you know, whatever. If you write Rust, you know what I'm talking about. Um, things can get very confusing when you start having like generic associated types and you have all these different types that are defined and blah, 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 blah. It can get confusing. Don't get me wrong. But if you're doing basic programming, um, and it's it's not that bad um so yeah i kind of i honored my i honored my burnout i respected it and i didn't push it and then when i felt like it was time to get back into it i did it with no expectations and then finally with the rust thing i was like you know what let's actually try let's let's make it a challenge and let's try to do it and the same way i've thrown myself at like tough video games or something i was like let's just do this let's see if i can rise the challenge and if, I can. I did. It was awesome. It was great. And it was the best feeling. And I didn't come out of that tired and exhausted and beaten. I came out of that revamped. I came out of that excited. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my story with burnout. Um, so now, you know, working back in the industry, have a day job and it's fine. I'm not getting burned out. Uh, periodically I think about like, Oh, wouldn't it be nice to quit again? But not because it's how it was five years ago. It's not because of that. I just, <laughs> the idea of not having to answer to anyone is very, very appealing. I mean, look at me. I pour my heart into this content right here. Wouldn't it be awesome just to be a full-time YouTuber? I would love it. I think it'd be the best thing in the entire world. Um, but until then, I'll keep doing my job. But yeah, that's that's my story. I, I wasn't sure I was going to make this video. I kind of thought like I would try to give tips to people if you were experiencing burnout. Here's what you could do. But the truth is, I don't know. And I've made a video talking about creative and burnout and stuff. You can go check it out. Um, those are my thoughts on kind of how I dealt with it in a more high level thing. This is my exact story. This is not how I think someone should deal with it. This is how I dealt with it. This is what worked for me. This is my N equals one story of tech burnout. So yeah, hopefully that was useful. And um, yeah, if you watch this far, you're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button because I like watching that number get bigger. And the more people that subscribe, the faster I can become a full-time YouTuber. And that's why I do it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you're dealing with this stuff, honestly, like share your story in the comments because I, sh I, I can assure you other people are dealing with this stuff too. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And of course, shout out to my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you for the continued support. I love it. It's awesome. You guys are great. If you want your name at the end of one of my videos, go ahead and um, yeah, sign up on my Patreon. You don't have to hit that subscribe button. That's all I really ask of you. I like watching that number go up. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Take care, everyone. See ya.